Welcome to Anti-Reptoid Radio, episode 13. Uh, we were gonna skip this number and go to 14, but, uh, you know, with the power of Christ, you don't have to fear superstition. Numbers have no magical power over me. No, well, except the book of numbers, obviously. But, obviously. Right. It just has moral power. Right. Uh, it has the moral authority to sustain itself. Uh, and of course, I'm Brother John, and with me we have the eminent historian, Dr. David Sids. Hello, great to talk to everyone again. Yes, and it's always a pleasure to be here in the studio with uh, someone as knowledgeable as yourself. Thank you. So... In previous lectures, we talked about Brother John's areas of expertise, and today we're going to talk about history. Just taking a deep breath and pulling back from modern politics, let's talk about a simpler time. The time when there was nothing. Right. Well, you know, there was never nothing. There was always God. Right. But nothing outside of him. Right. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and god said let there be light that's right and then the light was divided from the darkness yes and this is god's creation it happened over the course of six days and then he rested um it's when he made the light he separated the waters established the firmament in the heavens right and what day did he rest on he rested on Sunday. No, he did not. He rested on Saturday. And Saturday is the day of Saturn. No, no, sorry, Brother John. Um, This is again your Masonic myths. It's, it's Zionistic, and while I don't have a problem with Judaism, they're in error. The worship has always happened on Sunday. And we can talk about Saturnism and Satanism and how various religions have moved God's day to various other days so that they could surreptitiously work on his day. Right, and that is really the root of the problem. We need to make Sundays holy again. Exactly, it's the Lord's day. I grew up, we didn't have stores open in town because it was the Lord's day. Now these liberals are moving in. And foreigners. And, and they're ignoring the Sabbath. Yes. You know, it's just about making a quick buck for them. They don't they don't care about our culture. They yeah. just they just want to make money. They're ruining the American folk community. Right. But you know, we said we weren't gonna talk about this stuff. Right, right. So let's let's you know let's go back to the creation. Yes. On the seventh day of creation, God rested. And then he made Adam and Eve. Well, he made Adam and Eve before. He made Adam before that. Well, right. But he makes them both in his image. No, he made Adam in his image. He created man with his word. And that was that. Oh, all right. I, I thought I read something different, but it must be my Masonic indoctrination coming through. You're thinking of this atheist idea that there are two creation stories. And this is a lie. The one is an embellishment of the other. They, they give you the week, then they go back a day and look at it in more detail. Right, that makes perfect sense. Now, while we're here, we should debunk this myth of four authors oh. in the book of Genesis. Yes. Yeah, so... As the atheists explain it... Yeah, it was a 19th century German atheist. I believe his name was Dunkel. Right. Or Gunkel. This guy, he's a shell. He's He works for the Rothschilds. Yeah, he was part of the German atheist aristocracy. Right, the Jewish intelligentsia, who were atheists. Exactly. And Saturn worshippers. Yes. Shabbat Shalom. Right. Now... These guys propose that there were four authors. There was the Yahwist. Yes. 
The priestly source. The Elohist? Yes. And the Deuteronomist. This interpretation is satanic. You know what? You know what? I'm going to disagree. I think it's absolutely correct. And the name of all those sources was Moses. Moses? He was an Elohist. He was a Yahwehist. He was a priestly source. And he was a Deuteronomist. That's right. There. Case closed. I mean, Moses tells us that he's the one writing. Yes. Except for when Joshua takes over. Right. Obviously. I mean... You That's can't, you can't just straw like, man when they say Moses couldn't have written it. Right. It's just, like, obviously Joshua took over. That's, that's what it says. Yeah. So obviously there are those four sources and they're one. They're Moses. But anyway. Well, well tell us, Dr. David Sitz. How did Moses know about the creation? Simple. He, he spent how many nights on Mount Sinai, talking to God. Bro. God told him to write this down. He didn't know. He, he didn't... Do you think he woke up and saw the creation? No. God told him to write, and he wrote. And he learned while he wrote. And you know what? He may not even, even have known the archaic Hebrew that God was telling him to write. It may have just passed through him as a medium. Right. Now, we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit. We need to... Go back to the garden. Yes. Before the fall. The fall. You know, we're we're not loosey-goosey over here at Anti-Raptoid Radio. Let's put some dates on things. And... Yes. All right. So, it was the, the fall happened on the sixth day of 4004 BC. Right. And on that day, it was God in his infinite but hard to grasp wisdom yes allowed the reptilians to seduce man and that's the thing i remember watching a show where there are these people trying to uh, catch their partner cheating and that's all god did he wanted to test our loyalty and we failed we we were seduced by a vile serpent right by the reptilians by the reptilians this is where it all began we wanted to become god right you know, before the creation, Lucifer was an angel. Yes. And he dwelt in the kingdom of heaven. And he wanted to be as great as God. And so God cast him out into a reptilian form. Yes. And sent him to Earth. Exactly. Earth was initially created to house the reptilians. Yes. And God wanted to test his his children by seeing if they could overcome the reptilians obviously they did not now at first right i mean jesus well, look at us i think i mean i i i erred i sinned i fell but i think i'm fighting the reptilians all right right i mean we give all of our time to fighting the reptilians this is all i think about and i know that once these are defeated I will be allowed to talk to my wife again. I will not have, have these ridiculous liberal court orders telling me to do things I don't want to do. Right. There will again be more than just moments of lightness. Yeah. Much of life is heavy to bear. And without Jesus supporting me, I would have fallen far lower than I have. Right. But we all fall because as the Satanist Masons say... As above, so below. And what happened to the world is what happens to the individual man. And we have all communed with the reptilians and allowed them to poison us with their serpentine words. Yes, there's this principle that works in all sciences. Sociology, history, psychology, and that is of phylogeny getting untouched and that is that everything's origin everything when it grows up recapitulates its history we can't develop without knowing where we've come from so just as 
babies go through uh, an amoeba stage and a uh, reptilian stage to become a human stage. We have to understand our historical stages to grow and know what the telos, the end, the purpose of God's plan is. Which, of course, is a return to God. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy named Gene Ray. This Gene Ray, <sighs> he denies the singularity of God. He denies it. He calls it monist death math. Right. What is this monist death math? And you know what? I don't mind being told I worship death. That brings me closer to God. Right. I mean, God is... He is the beginning, and he is the end. God is the end. To worship the end is to worship God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. Gene Ray wants you to forget the Omega. Right. He wants you to worship a cube. A cube. Yeah. He doesn't believe in the Omega. He doesn't believe in the round. He doesn't believe in circles. He's, he's, he's an agent of disinformation. He was paid by the Saturnine cult of the cube. And he was invited to speak at MIT. Like, these people follow Gene Ray. But they have, no, they have recently retracted their talk from their website. And they are no longer supporting the debate for Time Cube. Because they're... Foregone conclusion. They're finally, they're, they're coming to their wits, right? Like, this is stupid. I don't know. I think they have their adherence there. You know if you go to MIT, you'll hear a bunch of Time Cube apologists. Yeah, I hear that Time Cube has a pretty strong grasp over there still, but... But, you know, the, the black cult of Saturn, it runs deep, and, uh, and the, the claws of Satan are, are deep in the world. And that's what we're talking about right now. So, after the creation... Right. We had... A history of various things, uh, generations of people growing after this, the original sin, Adam and Eve be begat, Cain and Abel, among others. Right, so we've got Cain and we've got Abel. And Cain murders his brother because he's a vegetarian. And, I mean, he gets banished. He's He is the father of all Asians. That's why Asians don't really eat meat. It's really weird, because he was such a promiscuous man that he's both the father of Asians and giants. Right. I mean, well, the giants were also the children of demons. Well, he bred with demons. Right. He could do anything with impunity. He had God's protection. Right. He had the mark of Cain. Exactly. And anybody who attacks the children of Cain will be destroyed. And Trump knows this. Yes. Which is why Trump is very cautious. In when his relations with China. Right. When he's dealing with the Chinese. But anyway, getting back to the Bible, we have Cain and Abel. Right. And, and now Abel is dead, so Seth is who carries on the line of Adam. And uh, this is where, you know, we get a couple of generations. And it's worth mentioning that Seth, the name was maintained as a family name so into the history that it's still a post-Babel word in Egyptian culture. Right. Not only that, but there are a group of satanic Gnostics who trace their origins back to Seth. Don't we all? Well, exactly. So, in their mind... I mean, I'm not a who... demon, so I must be related to Seth. Right. Exactly. In their mind, everybody is related to Cain. And that's just not true. That's only the Chinese. Only the Chinese. And you know, that's why we shouldn't strike them. I mean... And they've mixed with the Russians. And that's yeah. what Hillary didn't understand. Right, and I mean, we can take some phone calls. Like, I wouldn't want to hit Russia. They obviously have a mark of Cain. Right. Like, don't, that shouldn't stop us from taking phone calls, but... Yeah, you have to take phone calls. This is a this is a business. Yeah, we're not a bunch of high school girls playing phone games. We've got to take some phone calls. Yeah, that's what that's what act, being a man of action is about. Trump's just getting quotes and appraisals. Right. This is what do you expect from from a businessman? But anyway, so 
this is the descent, and we, this is also where we see healthiness. You, you don't get any Methuselahs anymore because of this highly inorganic and processed diet with preservatives and unnatural additives. I mean, I'm hoping to Methuselah myself with DNA fours, colloidal silver, and just try to get a high double, triple digit, like 143. I think that is highly realistic. Right, so next in our story, we start to see man growing wicked upon the face of the earth. By the generation of Methuselah, it's happening. Right. And it grows intolerable by the time of Noah. Right, and so Enoch is taken up to become the Metatron. Yep. And, he walks with God. Right, which is really a fancy way of saying you become a hyperdimensional object. Yes, he's transcended the dimensions. He's He is one of the Archons defending us from the reptiles. Right. I mean, Enoch is on our side. Uh, the Book of Enoch, however, is... I think... I'm not going to... I don't want... I'm going to break from Protestants and say this. I think there is biblical history there, but I think it was polluted by the time it got into the Ethiopic and Slavonic churches. Oh, definitely. So, we can't read anything from it. Right. I mean, we can a little. I mean, what Trey Smith has gotten from it is incredible. He's brilliant, though. I'm I, I'm not that brilliant. Right. Trey Smith, you know, he has the wisdom and the fortitude to interpret the scriptures correctly. Yes. Because all scripture should be uh, a tool for guiding and directing. It's reading the mind of God. Right. Einstein thought you did that in the laboratory. It's put in a book, it's been printed, it's been translated into every language. Right, and this is really, I think, where you and I, Dr. David Sids, part ways with a lot of the pe the church-going Christians. I don't have a problem with church. I don't either. Uh, I just find every time that I bring up things like the Book of Enoch... Or other doctrinal issues. Right, uh, especially... You know, the reptilians. Yes. Uh, oh, um, anything involving Assyrians or Egypt, yeah. yeah. You know. But I think that this is part of the mind control. If they knew and they understood and they took it into their hearts that the Book of Enoch is real, they would, they would understand where we are now. When we get to the fall of the Roman Empire, I'll explain the corruption in the church a little better. All right, so... Moving on, uh, God decided to destroy mankind. Yes, and so he commissioned Noah to build a spaceship of 300 cubits. Right. To hover above the clouds, above the storm. Right. And weather it there. Right. Now, now the rain, the, the, the amount of rainfall that had to happen, that would have heated up the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, to just boiling temperatures that the, the earth would have just been scorched and let me just stop here though people often criticize noah's ark how can you get all the animals in and i'm not going to be one of those people saying oh he only got types of this genus or this species or this class he got them all and the reason is have you ever seen an episode of doctor who do you know it looks like a small phone booth but when you go into it it's huge it's infinite. Now imagine if it looked like a 300 cubit floating saucer. Imagine how many animals Noah could fit in that. Right. I it's, mean, he it fit looks, all of them. It, it's bigger on the inside. He fit all of them except the dinosaurs. Because obviously they were in league with the reptilians. I they think are the reptilians. They are. But there were a few dinosaurs spared. And I think that just goes to show that God wants us to be tempted. I am under the impression that the crocodile was purely maintained because of Shem's mystery initiation into the pre-Egyptian satanic mysteries or satanic. So your 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 proposition is that but God would have known this. God saved Seth, therefore the reptilians. Shem, I mean. 
Well, God's, you know, he's not out to make it easy for us, you know. He wa he would never wipe out the reptilians. How could he s how could he see the fruits of our labor? Right. You know, uh virtue is not virtue unless it's tested. Yes. And that's that's what's wrong with Catholicism and churches. It's cloistered virtue. That's right. Erasmus spoke about this in his great book in praise of folly now erasmus was a catholic yes like he you know he saw a lot of faults but let's be fair if he was a, if he came a little later he wouldn't have been a catholic right exactly and and let's remember you know we've said this before there wouldn't be luther without erasmus yes exactly so he he helped luther but, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Way ahead of ourselves. So the flood, you know, it heats up the surface of the earth. Uh, it wipes everything out. You know, it, it turns parts of India into glass. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy flood. And with Noah and his ark, which is, a, again, a spaceship, uh, they hover above the waters. And then, uh, eventually, he sends out a dove which is a drone yes and the wow. uh, still a dove though right and then the, the the dove returns unscathed with an olive branch in his mouth uh so they find landing they land on mount ararat yep uh it's in modern day armenia right and uh there god sends a rainbow God sends a rainbow. Of course. Now, this is something... Well... The we rainbow say... is a symbol well, of the promise that God will never wipe out mankind again. Yeah. And, and this is part of the, the perversion that is going on today. Yes, with a rainbow. Right, they're laughing at us because this is mankind wiping itself out. Like, and this is the thing. Norse mythology, while I don't believe in their gods, obviously, they recognize God's rainbow with the rainbow road. But the modern rainbow, like, even when my dad was around, there was no violet in the rainbows. This is part of the LGBTQ Mandela effect. Right. They, you know, CERN is hard at work manipulating our opinions by changing our past. And now there's another color in the spectrum. Right, so now we've got to deal with this problem of uh, people usurping symbols that God has sent to us. We need to take back their original meaning. So, you know, if I ever wear a rainbow, I am showing my, my pride, pride in a symbol that God will never wipe out mankind again, even though I actually know that he will. Well, Which he is, won't wipe us out, he'll... He'll redeem us. Right, I mean... save us. Right, he, I mean... We've already been redeemed. Exactly. I mean, the, those of us that were are elect. But many are called, but few are chosen. That's right, and that's not up for debate here. No. Uh, this, is a, this is a Calvinist radio show. Yes. And we will not suffer any of that Arminian nonsense. Yeah, no joking about the Bible here. Right, okay, so... Noah lands his ship, ship, and he lets out his uh, three sons and their wives, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Now, we've spoken about these guys before on the show, so uh, it should be revealed to you that Ham, Africa, because his skin was burned. Yep. Uh, Japheth. Is yep. the of... Of the Gr Greeks. Yep, father of Prometheus. Right. Who is Satan. Yes. Oh, he is a bedeviler of mankind. He, he It's just a story of the fall again. The Greeks confused the story of Japheth with the story of Adam and Eve because they had a simpler and less sophisticated mythology with many gods they had to fit this truth into. Exactly. And the last son, who carried the line of Christ. And it's in this time, after this is happening, that mankind starts to come back and coalesce. And this is when we get the Tower of Babel. 
Right. I mean, everybody spoke one language because... I mean, oh, I mean, 150 years ago, they were all on the same spaceship together. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they would have spent... T they had 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, but, you know... One second, I gotta just take care of this animal. The security system keeps detecting blips in the backyard, and I think it's the neighbor's dog. Oh. Well, so... What we've got is a new world order. Not the new world order yes. of today, but but the start of it. Mm -hmm. This was the reptilians who obviously survived underground. The reptilians. Beneath the mountains. Uh, in Agartha. Yes, because when God created the earth, the, the waters had to be separated from waters. And one of the things that was created was this canyon underground called Agartha and as the water separated and as God formed the earth this hollow is where the reptilians took refuge right this, this is, is where the, the flood waters receded to this is the core that God banished the reptilians to and then built earth around it and separated waters from it right we, now we need to to talk about something here because uh, we have recently come to the conclusions that many of you have also recently come to the earth is flat all right that the earth is flat i mean after seeing the flight patterns when you see a plane going from africa to california why does it go along asia why don't you just go straight across the ocean right and you know it doesn't matter like all all these depictions of earth by nasa they're all fake they're computer generated yeah I've never seen a picture of the Earth. Right. Have you ever seen a picture of the Earth that wasn't from uh, some sort of government agency? Exactly. Or someone paid by them. Right. Or someone who wants to push the message of the ball Earth. Right. This is all part of the New Age and the New World Order plot to convince us that there's no such thing as demons, that the Earth is just... They, they, they've took on this lie of this sorcerer, Giordano Bruno. Yes. Who said that there, there are were, infinite creations. Right. And that there are many stars with many planets. And many gods. Well, the Catholics burnt him for that. That's probably you one know, of the few a broken things. clock is right twice a day. Exactly. So, this is all part of the, the, the deception to make us believe that the Bible is not real. And the Bible is clear that the Bible is real. Right. And the Bible is clear that there is a dome, a firmament above us. Yes. And that that there is only one earth. Yes. And that it is at the center of the universe. Yes. This is why the Catholics suppressed these new world people. Because they didn't want people to realize how small the earth is. Do you think it's really a six month like Corsair cruise in the 16th century across the ocean? Of course not. But it's probably, it's, it's like three times the width of the English Channel. But they, as long as they control the media, they think we're further apart. They think they can control transit from continents by telling us that these are oceans apart. Oceans, it's a thing of Greek myth. Right, this is all reptilian deception. And they're trying to use this mass of Earth to make you not question the wall of ice that holds us in. How? I mean, of course there's space. It's right there above us. Right. And so when the end times begin, what the media is going to try to paint the demonic invasion of the planet as is an alien invasion. Yes. And this is all part of... It's to normalize them. You can negotiate with aliens. You can't negotiate with demons. No, of course not. Unless you're Faust. And look what happened to him. Yes, and they're going to say, maybe we can learn something from these quote-unquote aliens. Much like, and they'll compare back to those immigrants that they let in and say, look, it worked then. Like, immigrants destroyed the Roman Empire. Right. Definitely. You know, I heard uh, Mary Beard uh, talking about how Lots of factors caused the fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah, Brennus, the Franks, the Visigoths, 
It wasn't just one group of immigrants, it was the Syrians and the Mexicans and the Canadians. You see, it's not just one group of immigrants coming in to kill us in our, our American Volkes uh, Gemeinschaft. It's many groups. All right, well, in any case, uh, let's get back to some real history. Yes, yes. So anyway, the Bible then goes on to... The Bible is an account of the Hebrews' past. So it doesn't go on to talk about the pyramids. But we know when the pyramids came about. Right. Um, it's kind of this Graham Hancock 10,000 He's PC right about shit. what they were used for. It's just nonsense. The problem is, he, his, his timeline's wrong. He's right. They were used as communications to the demons in the sky. Um, they align up with Orion. These are fertility places, because reptilians uh, mix up uh, food and sex in their mind. So they're fertility, so they're also the grain silos. And this is the thing. Ben Carson's wrong. They are not. They were not built as grain silos. They were converted to grain silos under Joseph. Right. Um, Joseph saw these I idols to, to reptilians, to demons. So back. Yes, and he decided, you're going to have a famine. So he converted these temples to pagan idols into grain silos, and Egypt thrived. But that's a thousand years from now still. Right. So, right now we have... The building of the pyramids. Right, because uh, the Tower of Babel has been struck down. About 2350. And man has scattered about the earth. And after a few generations of six or seven children per generation, there were more than enough kids to build the pyramids between the year 2200 and 2050 BC. Right. And now we get the pyramids. It's not long after at the outskirts of the great satanic empire of Egypt. Abraham is born. Right. We get this man, Abram of the Chaldees. Yes. He's a Babylonian. Let's not forget this. Hey, they're not all bad. They're not all bad. Right. Well, that's... Just, just most of them, and that's why you gotta be careful. Right, and that's what set Abraham apart, was that Abraham was just... You know, he didn't know anything about Jesus, but he knew about Jesus. Yes, he did not know about Jesus the person, but he obviously, sometime early in life, had a road to Damascus woman. Right, and so... He was a righteous man. And so, God, the one true God, decided to come down to Abram and tell him that he was going to become the grandfather of his chosen people. Exactly. And now, I hear a lot of you out there talking about how Israel is... Uh, some sort of reptilian entity. And as I tell people, if God thought they were reptilians, he would have called them that. Chosen people are not reptilians. Right. They are the elect. And as Christians, we could be so lucky that we are born God's elect. We have to earn it through faith and deeds. And I envy them, but they are not reptilians. No. Definitely not. Netanyahu, probably. Well, they are not reptilians, but reptilians can infiltrate them. Right. That's what reptilians do. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, Abraham is the first. Uh, God prefigured the sacrifice of Jesus with asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And then, figuratively, re resurrecting Isaac by not killing him. And that, that's just telling you what's going to happen. That's just God foreshadowing in his own book. Right. It's God is a literary genius. He's the best. And anyway, eventually, Abraham's people go to Egypt. And that is going to be the subject of the next historical installment. I don't know if it'll be the next episode, but we will definitely continue this thread. Have a good day. And stay vigilant. Oh, so it's Christmas is past, uh, and um, I just want to say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, my sons, if you're listening, uh, 
this, I wish all the best for you. Know that your father loves you, and Merry Christmas. <laughs>